forget to watch Ghost Adventures for the Halloween special on Saturday night because Annabelle the doll is going to be featured on this episode and remember I actually got to sit in the exact seat spot of where Annabelle the doll was so I kind of have heard a little bit about it not everything so I'm as excited as you guys are to actually see what happens just remember I was in that exact spot as we watch it Saturday so I'm terrified to see what ends up happening. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and today we are going to start part one of three review for Vicksburg for Ghost Adventures. So the first part was Demons and Dolls. So Ghost Adventures was invited by the mayor to come down to Vicksburg, Mississippi, which is a big landmark for where part of the Civil War took place. So it's got a big, large, haunting history down in Vicksburg. So we're seeing the land of where the Civil War took place. As they're walking through Vicksburg, they meet someone that says, right down the street is where 17,000 soldiers have been laid to rest after the Civil War. So many of you guys have tweeted at me, Facebooked me, everything else in between asking me why does Vicksburg have the scent of ghosts of shepherds down lurking in the shadows beneath them? To be perfectly honest, the only opinion that I can have on it is this is like a really big F you middle finger to Nick Groff. Why do I think it's a middle finger? Because Nick Groff has the Scooby-Doo machine and he's got Daphne and what are the other ones named? Scooby? What's the guy that wears sweatpants? Bill? He would be uh, Shaggy, right? So Ghost of Shepherdstown has taken on this like gooberish persona with the van. We know production's overly involved. We know that Elizabeth Saint is an actress. We already can tell a lot of this stuff is staged and not real. So this is Zach's way of saying, oh nay nay. If you're gonna do a haunted town, then you should do it right with multiple episodes and I'm gonna show you how. So instead of using this goober police chief that they use on Ghost of Shepherdstown, he's using an actual mayor. No Scooby-Doo machine, legit interviews, no sweatpants, no actresses and actors, no fake interviews, no people that have been recognized on IMBD Pro. Here's how it can really be done Ghost Adventure style and I'm gonna show you. This is a seriously haunted town full of 100% legitimate haunted facts. No cheesy chief of police. That I didn't miss at all. This is a demonic help for a possible possession in a salon. And as they're running to go into the salon, they hear this monstrous car wreck full of screaming. I find it very interesting because I too have been on location where we're about to shoot and do interviews or even investigate and all of a sudden either a natural disaster occurs or some like really sad, depressing thing happens. And this is proof yet again Somehow, the paranormal side interacts still with the real place that we call Earth here. The salon, right? It says it's been hit three times, not only for what the obvious it could be, you know, with a civil war, but who knows, it could have been used for torture during slavery, for just slavery in general, for auctions of slaves, and possibly even prostitution, right? This poor guy wakes up, claims he has like a red filter on his eyes, and he can't see straight. 
found it very strange that her son, the woman that owns the salon, would not answer any of Zach's questions. Apparently he was very leery to answer anything, so finally Zach stopped prodding and ended up talking to his mom. The mom did say, yeah, his attitude stinks, and that's when they heard something being thrown in the background of the salon, which is where they're living. They did catch the EVP that was shared that said the little girl, I'm still alive in here, which might I add was a class A EVP, like that was crystal clear, wonderful EVP that was captured. Although that was a little girl's voice, for some reason to me it didn't seem like it was dark, it didn't seem demonic. So sadly think about if the slaves were here, you know, or auctioned off, there's potential other slaves could have been pregnant, could have given birth, could have brought children that turned into child slavery. And maybe a child slave did die in that house during the exchange of the Civil War. They do say that there were slaves that were held in the basement and they believe that they are negative and agitated, possibly being frozen in time thinking that they're still slaves, right? So the part two of this episode is when Zach moves on to the doll museum and this is where they have the famous Holocaust doll that was sent here to hopefully protect it, right? All in all, there's 1,851 dolls and there's an army general that owns the store named Army, army General Mike Bakarich. And he got my heart, like he, he got my heart pretty bad because he started to cry when he talked about his wife. He got really choked up, um, you know, saying that his wife used to be the owner and, and that she passed away. They did, interestingly enough, show photos of the army general in his uniform with his wife. And just because I'm knowledgeable on military stuff because of Blake, I just wanted to point out that um, Army General Bakarich um, was wearing something called a combat infantry badge um, that was in his photos. And the easiest way I can, I can say this is that means that he's been through and he's seen some shit. <laughs> So um, major respects to him if, I don't know if he was in the Gulf War, I'm not sure if he participated in many wars, but um, major respects and to him for serving our country because you guys know I love our veterans. So he says his wife used to say that um, the girl's spirit was still with her doll and that the doll actually would move by itself, the Holocaust doll. We're gonna go now into you know the night vision that happens. When they go lights out for night vision, they start to hear screaming in the doll room, which to me is terrifying because I'm just not a fan of clowns and dolls. I'm not like in fear of them, I'm just not a fan. So knowing that you heard one of them possibly talk is very creepy to me. There were literally rooms and rooms of dolls and I felt like during the investigation I almost got lost because they all look alike or they all look similar, similar and I'm trying to figure out which, you know, area is which. Like was that where Zach just was or is this where he, he said he was going? And then they were all like oddly connected by the end. So it was, it was very strange. I thought it was so funny when Zach got scared by Santa Claus. I thought I was gonna die. <clears throat> So we all know what kind of kid Zach was. He wasn't a big fan of Santa Claus, I'm assuming. I really love too, like as Zach gets afraid of, you know, this giant Santa Claus, Jay is on screen and like Zach's like crying for his life to Jay and Jay's just laughing. Like I really like that Jay is like the quiet underdog and I feel like he handles ghost adventures very well. Like I feel like he's just like, huh. Like, you know, just like ridiculous, whatever. So now Billy and Aaron are in the basement of the salon and they're hearing like stompings above them. For some reason, Billy wigs out, like whatever is in there with them at that time, Billy's in a total fight or flight sort of mode and his body and his reactions are telling him, I need to go. It's that adrenaline rush that you get. And I just wanna remind you guys that you know, sometimes we'll see things on TV and we'll be like, oh, he should have stayed, he should have done this. Yeah, but sometimes your body can't help to react. Like if you're adrenaline, it's, it's actually a neuroscience term. It's called a parasympathetic and a sympathetic system that relies in each one of us. And so basically when you have an adrenaline rush or if something scares you that bad, your body is going to either go into flight mode and run automatically, or it's gonna go into fight mode. And sometimes you can choose, sometimes you can't. Sometimes your body chooses which one it happens in. So if you notice, even when Aaron tried to get Billy to stay, he was like, kind of like, I don't want to stay here. So he was already in flight or fight mode at that point. 
So just remember that sometimes as investigators, when it's dark and there's loud bangs and something has triggered our system, like our neuro system, we can't help but flight. Like, <laughs> like we should have stayed. I wish I would have stayed. Like, have you ever gotten that piece of evidence? You're like, shoot, why did I leave? Like, I wish I wouldn't have left. You can't help it sometimes. It's literally neuroscience. Okay, so this 1920 doll that was from the concentration camp in Nazi, um, it was from like Nazi Germany era. It was sold in this estate sale and then that's how this woman in Vicksburg had acquired it. So they set up the mag cam from Bill Chapel, which by the way, I have downloaded the app. I'm going to try it out for you guys. I never really finished um, showing you kind of some of the equipment that I had. So I will do that back with apps. I will do another one of those. So they didn't really catch much other than Zach gets this like really weird hiss noise that comes from that doll. And it's really strange because I didn't really sense there was anything dark, but maybe something just didn't like Zach messing with the dolls or being in there by himself late at night. So now we're cutting back to Billy and Aaron. They're in the basement. Um, and Aaron's asking if there's any like slain soldiers here and you know Billy's still wanting to get out out of the basement of the salon and I'm like I Understand like there is a word that I use a term I use when I am ghost hunting and that is called Discombobulated it is a real word feel free to look it up But what discombobulated means is basically you get all turned around so you went into the location knowing all the facts you knew the history you listen to everything everybody said, you're ready to go, like you can talk about this all day. And then when you get in the zone of parasympathetic, sympathetic system or adrenaline or you know your nervous system acting up to the high levels of EMFs around you, you just get discombobulated. So I was upset because I heard Aaron Moore calling out to the soldiers versus they said it was used for slavery. I don't think he did it on purpose, but I think Aaron was discombobulated. It happens to all of us, honestly. There is no way for all of us as ghost hunters, even seasoned investigators like Gak, there is no way for anyone to be perfect 100% of the time. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone's human, no one's going to get everything right always, so you just have to cut them some slack. But unfortunately, I think missing that um, you know, lost potential evidence because if the slaves that are down there, that their souls are still trapped in the basement, they're not gonna answer as soldiers. In fact, that might trigger them to be silent and be scared because they might think that soldiers are coming down there to get them. So they turned on the ovulus with, you know, Bill and, Billy and Aaron. They did get a couple of good things on the ovulus, but, um, you know, Billy, in fact, finally corrects Aaron at the last minute says, I literally wrote it down. No, you need to talk about the slaves to Aaron. So at this point, it's been late in the night. They're probably tired. It's probably been going on for a while. And Aaron just now has been kind of, you know, reminded to, to not talk about the soldiers, but ask questions about the slaves. So unfortunately, I felt like that was a big miss on their part. And it happens to all of us. Nobody's perfect. There was a toy mobile that started moving when Zach was in the other room of the doll room. And that was really creepy to me. I don't like that because it's like something knows it's there. Something knows Zach is there. And it's so confident that it doesn't want to be around Zach that it decides to go in another room and, and kind of like move stuff. That's just creepy to me, I guess. But you would assume with child's toys and vintage child's toys, there's going to be an attachment or two or a few hundred <laughs> on those on those dolls, and especially in somewhere like Vicksburg. Who got the, who heard the EVP of the doll telling Zach to father me? <laughs> oh my God, you know, Zach doesn't have kids. I don't know why, it's none of my business, but that probably scared the crap out of him. Like if there's one way to make a dude run, like it's <laughs> ask him to father you or something, like very creepy. So the salon, they got some other words I just wanna read. Water on the Obulus 3, high, beat, Africa, climb. Whatever the energy was there, other than just the words that they captured, it made, it made Billy really sad. You know, he was like, um, you can leave, it's just so sad, you can go. You don't have to stay here. If you're stuck here as a slave, you can go. So I have to give huge props to Billy in this episode. Not only did he try to get Aaron back on track with the slavery, but he also tried to release these energies. And 
I think that is the most responsible thing a ghost hunter can do, especially in a case like this when it's related to slavery and sad things like the Civil War, is that you don't want those energies to be trapped there forever. We can't guarantee that they're crossed over, obviously. We don't know how to do that. We can't guarantee it's done. But to know morally and ethically that at least Billy tried to do that, huge props to me. Like, Billy is the winner of the night to me for this episode. Right as Zach says, I want you to pick up the doll that, dot, dot, dot. He didn't even finish his sentence and this doll falls off the shelf, okay? Why do I find this interesting? This is one of those moments where I truly believe that sometimes interaction between the other side and our world, the veil lifts so much to the point where you don't even have to finish your sentence for them to understand what you're wanting them to communicate. And this is exactly what happened with this. Before he finishes even asking the question, the doll's on the ground like, oh, I'll tell you which doll that I'm with. These are those moments that I love, guys. These are those moments where literally it's like, Something happens, something just happens to shift right in the atmosphere between our world and theirs, and you get that perfect response, and this was the perfect response before Zach even finished his sentence. Yes, this is an example of paranormal activity. This is an example of poltergeist activity, which is another thing I wanted to make clear. Technically, poltergeist activity is any sort of movement. So even if my pen flew up in the air by itself, that is still considered poltergeist activity. Everyone has in their head that poltergeist activity automatically means there's a demon in the house because of the movie Poltergeist. That is not correct. So we need to bring it back to a level where we're being real, right? You guys know that I like to be real. So remember, any signs of poltergeist activity is just general movement and it doesn't have to be a demon. All it is is a really strong entity, it could be dark, it may not be, that it somehow can gather enough electromagnetic energy and fields in the air to be able to create actual movement in our physical world. Zach did something that was like the most brilliant thing ever, and I am so proud of him for it, which was taking the Mel meter to the doll right after the incident happened to record actual electromagnetic fields and fluctuations on the doll and within the area of the doll itself. This is what we need to do as investigators to collect data. After there has been a serious breach with poltergeist activity, this is exactly what you need to do. You are documenting real proof of the paranormal. You are documenting accurately that 100% in fact, electromagnetic fields are related and create and make up the energy that entities use here on this physical earth to move things and shake things and perhaps even speak. Bravo, bravo. That was, that was one of the best things I've ever seen. I'm just so, so impressed by it. This is what we need in the field, guys. So now that Zach has done it, it is your turn. Everyone needs to start doing it. Get that really good evidence on, post it on YouTube and link it to me below. The next question is, is that residual energy from when the ghost did it? Or is that energy from the ghost still standing there? Because eventually the millimeter goes to zero and then it's gone. I don't know, that's a great question. That is a thesis that we all need to start working on for our scientific community and the paranormal. And let's start trying to build some more data collection towards this so that we can decipher an answer for what was this exactly? Was it from the energy that was there or is the energy still standing there and then it walked away? Impeccable evidence. 100% impeccable evidence. Zach says that he's feeling ice cold. I know that the Mel meter has a temperature gauge on it, but I always carry a thermo gun. They're fairly inexpensive. You can buy them on Amazon and eBay. Thermo guns, in my opinion, tend to be a lot more accurate than the millimeter. So I would have been happy if he would have backed himself up with a thermo gun reading on the area. That would have not only been a singular proof of electromagnetic fields being fluctuated on the millimeter, but would have also been backed up by temperature fluctuations with a thermo gun. So just keep that in mind for the future, but still impeccable evidence amazing scientific readings and scientific research that we can document now as a community. At the end of the episode, there's this awkward thing that happens, which we're not used to seeing because Ghost Adventures is all about raw, real, it's happening. 
we're going to end the episode raw real. And then suddenly they're sitting down with this woman to tell her that here, this is something that the viewers haven't seen yet. I decided to go upstairs and do a little bit of pr provocation. Um, and because I thought it was a malevolent energy. And so we see Zach go upstairs and he starts to provoke. It wasn't a little bit like he was using the name of Jesus Christ and all that stuff on the stairs, which was shocking because if there was a malevolent energy that got angry, it probably could have shoved him down the stairs. So keep that in mind, guys. Like if you're doing something stupid like that, don't do it on the stairs. And then he felt like he got like a taser shockwave in the middle of his back. And he starts doing this like panic flip, which by the way, poor Billy is like screaming and freaking out. Like what happened? What happened? Like he's in fight or flight mode himself trying to help Zach because he doesn't know what happened. And Zach's like dancing all over the room, but he's staying silent and not saying what exactly happened. <laughs> Zach claims that this is something that may have been pain, like from a slave, and they wanted Zach to experience their pain. So Zach says, I don't think it's demonic. I think it's something trying to communicate its pain with me. I'm with you guys. I didn't like the ending. I don't like to see Zach sit down and do like a taps, ghost hunters sort of thing. That's a ghost hunters thing. This is a ghost adventures thing. We don't like them put together. Please don't do it again. <laughs> I do understand that Zach was trying to educate the owner of, of the salon to make her feel better that it wasn't a demonic thing that was inside of her salon, that it was perhaps something else. But once again, I feel like they missed the opportunity to do a really thorough investigation in the basement of the salon since Aaron got discombobulated and kept talking about the soldiers instead of the slavery. So what did you guys think of the episode? You know I love to hear your feedback. Do you guys also think that this is kind of an F you to Nick Roth? Of course it was done much better than Ghosts of Shepherdstown. It's just something out of Zack's realm that we're not used to seeing with ghost adventures. This is the last giveaway. This is the Halloween giveaway. So I will actually be ending this giveaway rather short. Um, for the rest of the month, I've been doing week-long giveaways. This will not be. This giveaway will be ending on Sunday, and I will be mailing them out on Monday morning so that you guys can get your stuff hopefully by Halloween because it is treat bags and it does have... Um, the rest of the giveaways from Zach's mom, once again, shout out to her for giving us free giveaways. Please make sure you guys give her a thanks down in the comments below. In order to enter in this giveaway, it will expire on October 29th at midnight Pacific Standard Time. You have to give my video a thumbs up. You have to subscribe to my channel. You have to leave me a comment below that you want to be entered in the giveaway. Make sure you guys follow me on social media because I might be doing a surprise big giveaway on one of my social media platforms, but I don't know which one yet, but there might be a surprise giveaway on one of my other social media platforms. So make sure you're on my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Facebook page. Make sure you guys enter the giveaway, make sure you guys follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time. Oh, yeah.